In this video we're going to look at returns, specifically arithmetic versus geometric average returns. To illustrate the idea of arithmetic versus geometric returns, let's just look at a simple case of a two period situation. In year one we earn a hundred percent return, so during that time period a one dollar investment is going to grow to two dollars. In period two, we earn a negative 50% return. So now we're going to lose half of our money. So that $2 that we had at the end of year one is only worth $1 at the end of the second year. Is our average return during this period 25% or 0%? If we calculate with arithmetic averages, which just average out the returns, we'd think we earned a 25% return. But you can tell by looking at what we started with and what we ended with that our actual return is zero. Now, with a two period return like, or two period example like we had in that last situation, it's very easy to look at what the real return is arithmetic versus geometric average. But let's walk through a little more complicated example. Let's say we have two investments, investment A and investment B, and we're looking at six years worth of returns. As you can see in investment A, returns tended to be lower, but more stable. 12% return in year one, negative 3% in year two, 8% in year three, 15% in year four, no return in year five, and finally a 4% return in year six. Investment B was a much more volatile investment. Higher returns when things were good, lower returns when things were bad. So we had a 50% return in year one, followed by a negative 40% return, 30%, 70%, 10%, and in year six we lose 50%. When we look at arithmetic averages versus geometric average returns, we can think of a formula. Arithmetic average just sums up the individual returns and divides by the number of periods. So we just add up all six years worth of returns, divide by six. The formula for geometric average is a little more complicated. We have to take for each year one plus the return, multiply those together for all the years, then take the nth root, in this case there are six years, so we'd take the sixth root, n would be equal to six, and subtract off one. Now the easiest way to go through this is to walk through an example. We're going to start with arithmetic averages and then go through geometric averages. We're going to go back to that example that we introduced of our two investments, A and B, and we're going to calc the, calculate the arithmetic average and geometric average return for both of these investments. For the arithmetic average, as I said, it's simply adding up the returns and dividing by the number of periods. So if we look, we have a 12% return in year one, lose 3% in year two, so we subtract that off, add in our 8% in year three, Add in our 15% in year four, add in 0% in year five, and 4% in year six. Gives us a total return of 36%. We divide that by our number of periods, which is six. So just divide by six. That gives us a 6% arithmetic average return. You can see that down here our answer is 6%. Do the same thing for investment B and here you can see we start out with 50%, subtract off our 40%, add in 30, add in 70, add in 10, subtract off our 50% year 6 return. Again there were 6 periods here so we divide by 6 our total return is 70% divided by 6 gives us 11.67%. So it appears when we look at these two investments 
that investment B offers a substantially higher return than investment A. But arithmetic average, as we saw earlier, can be a little bit misleading. So now let's do the geometric average. Again, as I mentioned, this is a little bit trickier. What we want to do with the geometric average is start with each of our individual returns, add one. So in the first year, we had a 12% return. We need to make that a decimal here, add one to it. So year one is 1.12. 1 Multiply by one plus the return in year two. In year two, we had a negative 3% return. So one plus negative 3% is 0.97. Year three, we had an 8% return. Year four, we had a 15% return. So again, one plus the return. Year five, we had no return, so that's just one. Oops, messed that up. I did an addition instead of a multiply, so let's just start that over. 1.12 times 0.97 times 1.08 times 1.15 times 1 times 1.04. That gives us 1.40328. And again, we want to take that to the 1 6 power. The 6 comes from the number of periods. We had 6 years, so we need to take that to the 1 6 power. Just do a quick 1 divided by 6. We get 0.1666 repeating. I'm going to go ahead and store that in my memory here. And now I'm going to use the Y to the X key. On your calculator, you should have a Y to the X, or in some calculators, it's an X to the Y. So I'm going to take that 1.40328 that we calculated. See that right here? We're going to raise that to the 1 6 power. So 1.40328. Take that to the 1 6 power press equals, and you'll see we get 1.05809. Now we still have to subtract off one. So let's take that one off there. That leaves us 0.5809. That is converted to percent, 5.81%. Let's do the same thing for investment B. 1.5 because the first year we had a 50% return. Year two, we had a negative 40% return. Negative 40 gives us one minus 0.4, or 0.6. 30% return in year three, 70% return in year four, 10% return in year five, and a negative 50% return in year six. Again, we take it to the one six power, and that's going to give us 1.51%. Now, as you can see, the arithmetic return, which we calculated earlier, showed us investment A doing much worse than investment B. The geometric return says just the opposite. Geometric return shows investment B at a 1.51% return, and investment A at 5.81%. Which one actually did better? The answer is investment A. Geometric return is more reliable. It's a compounded rate of return over the entire investment horizon. Thing to remember is it's harder to recover from negative returns. If you lose 50%, you can't gain that back with a 50% return. Instead, you need to earn 100% just to get back to even. Arithmetic average throws off those compounding effects. The geometric average captures them correctly. So just a quick recap. Arithmetic averages tend to overstate the true return. And the more volatile the return stream, the more important it is to use geometric averages. We can see that when we look at our example. Return stream one 
in our example was relatively stable. Return stream 2 was much more volatile. Our arithmetic average for investment A was 6%. Our geometric average for the same investment was 5.81. Notice there's very little difference between the arithmetic and geometric average for investment A. But investment B, which was much more volatile, high returns, very low returns, now we see a big difference. Investment A or investment B showed an 11.67% arithmetic return and only 1.51% geometric return. So the more volatile the investment stream, the more important it is to use geometric averages. Hopefully after that you're a little more comfortable with the idea of arithmetic versus geometric returns. Remember geometric returns are better. They're a true measure of returns. Arithmetic returns tend to overstate things and that's going to be much more important for volatile returns. A very stable return, like maybe you're looking at a bond market mutual fund, is probably going to be okay with arithmetic returns. It's not going to be that far off. But if you're looking at something like emerging stock market mutual fund, you want to definitely make sure you're using geometric averages.